Good evening, I'm Bob Malden, commentator for SWE Fury. Tonight, we have a very special episode for you, recapping some great matches from our Canton event, Go for the Gold. We'll show those matches for you here in just a little bit, but tonight, a big goal of this episode is to visit with our senior official, James Beard, to talk about rules as far as wrestling is concerned, to talk about some of the talent you will be seeing in SWE, and one in particular who's caused some problems and how James Beard plans to address those problems. That's all coming up tonight on a very special episode of SWE Fury. Getting action underway tonight for us, Mr. Saturday Night Michael Berry up against Jackson Stone, everybody's friend. Not only are the fans here in attendance getting their tickets uh, money's worth, but they are also here tonight getting to be a part of something that is going to be huge. That is this TV taping that we're doing for Southwest Wrestling Entertainment. Go for the gold as the bell rings and the match gets underway. And you know something, Bob, because when you have a title match, no matter what they say, there's so much more intensity in that particular match. And you get to see that tonight in three of them, that's awesome. One of the things that I've noticed about the competition level here with Southwest Wrestling Entertainment, even the non-title matches, uh, you see the intensity there. You see that, uh, that, that hunger because they all are potential champions somewhere down the road as this organization grows. You know, they're all young and upcoming guys, stars in professional wrestling, trying to make a name. And there's just something there when you're like that. You'll dig and you'll go. Can you imagine even taking two of the falls they take out here tonight? <laughs> I know. What you have with Jackson Stone is athleticism. I heard the same thing I've heard about uh, Stone. They're saying he's one great athlete. Absolutely, and uh, what he uh, gains in athleticism, he might give up in size against Barry as he goes for another shoulder tackle but is denied by Jackson Stone. Let's talk a little bit about Hunt for the Cure. You know, this great uh, organization, which is uh, the beneficiary of uh, some of the proceeds for tonight's event, as we go to a count of only two. Uh, this, this great charity, let me tell you a little bit about what they do. Terminally ill children not always want to do like the Make-A-Wish or some of the other things that are out there, but what Hunt for the Cure does is they give kids opportunities to go on hunting excursions and trips and things of that nature to go out and enjoy nature and be a part of nature and uh, to do something that's an age-old tradition in these United States, and that's what Hunt for the Cure does, and that's what we're here. All of these fans you see out here tonight have contributed in uh, with their tickets that they bought tonight to raise money for Hunt for the Cure, and we thank everyone for their part in that. You know, I love that. I love the Hunt for the Cure because it involves kids and you're trying to help kids. I love kids, and, and, uh, and man, I think that's one of the greatest things ever. It's an awesome thing, and uh, we have a count going now as Jackson Stone awaits patiently in the ring for Michael Berry to come back in, and he gets brought in the hard way. Yeah, I think Mr. Saturday Night's wishing he was Friday night by now. <laughs> he does. He <laughs> kind of wishing he could go back in time and stay <laughs> in Friday night. And, nope, there he gets a little jawbreaker in on Jackson Stone. That should turn things around a little bit. <laughs> Some of that uh, that ring attire of Michael Berry there, even though yours wasn't pink, kind of reminds me a little bit of, of, of your uh, ring attire back in the day. Uh, <laughs> you know, probably brings back a lot of memories of seeing this action take place in front of you here. You were in the ring. You, you fought for many titles through the years. And uh, how does it feel for you to see good old-fashioned professional wrestling making a comeback in Texas? I love it because you know something? I'll promise you one thing. I held belts all over the world. Right. Okay? And, but the, the one I was the most proudest of in my whole career is when I was the Texas heavyweight champion. Because I'm from Texas, born and bred, and I'll die in Texas. And I always love Texas. And I was the most proud of that one right there. And when I watch these guys out here giving it to their all in, in the state of Texas, believe me, it makes me get excited. I, I really love it. 
Well, we're proud to be uh, here with you and have you be a part of this great event uh, on TV. Go for the gold wrestling spectacular as we watch Michael Berry and Jackson Stone Side suplex there in the ring as it looks like the tables have turned once again. A count of only one this time, though, for Michael Berry as Jackson Stone kicks out, showing that athleticism that we spoke of a, for a baseball player, you say. I'm telling you, and I'll tell you one thing, that side suplex, I'll tell you something about that thing. That's how I got a fractured neck in two places. It was from that same move right there, and they had to go in and replace two vertebrae. So let me tell you something. Anytime people think that that don't hurt, give it a try. Okay. Yes, and you and I both know those chops hurt like oh, crazy. Oh, they sting, buddy. They sting. Michael Berry having none of that. Jackson Stone is over. Lifter a little uh, eye rake there. I think the referee missed. A lot of uh, times they do those chops, Bob, just to keep the guy off guard so they can do a more devastating move. You know? Well, that that uh, that sting definitely stuns you and takes your helps you take your eye off the ball a little yes, bit, so to speak. <laughs> Yeah, and the baseball player did, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that my jokes aren't totally lost on you. I appreciate that. That's, Thank, that's... You. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, he better, he better get – maybe he needs a baseball bat with this big guy. He might. <laughs> Again, count of only one. Five minutes have passed. Five minutes have passed. Uh, he's still got some go in him. Yep, uh, we've seen these guys and they're pacing themselves. We can see that as uh, this match has been going on five minutes now. Irish whip into the corner and here comes Jackson Stone met by a big boot and now Michael Berry is working his way up the ropes. How high oh, will he go? Uh, oh. He caught it. Nobody home with the elbow drop. Big chop again from Jackson Stone. Another big chop. Back in Michael Berry into the corner again. Irish whip reversed, and no, not happening. Oh, big, I didn't know where that was going to go. And a big clothesline says Michael Berry crashing to the mat. That's a new one on me. I seen that elbow right to the jaw. That, that looked devastating, buddy. It did. And he gave me one right back. Returning the favor a little bit is Michael Berry. Jackson Stone, oh, my, what? Look at that, crashing right to the center of the ring. That that had to be a lot of just like uh, strength in the abs to be able to take, he's so far out to the end of his feet. Got him up in a fireman carry now, off the back. It rolls him up, he has a handful oh, of tights. Yeah, a handful of tights right there, Referee you're right. didn't see it. Michael Berry. And some guys just say it don't matter if you win or you beat, as long as you cheat. <laughs> His first showing at Southwest Wrestling Entertainment, Jackson Stone losing to Michael Berry, who with a handful of tights put away Jackson Stone in their debut match here at Southwest Wrestling Entertainment. Uh, he'll live to wrestle again another day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to SWE Fury. I'm here right now with Director of Talent Relations and Senior Official James Beard. And those are two very different roles within the company. And James, I want to talk to you, first of all, about talent relations. So it is, uh, it's you who has gone out and developed relationships with these, uh, these wrestlers who have competed all over, uh, not just in Texas or the United States, but all over the world. Right. And you're bringing in the top talent that you've had the chance to work with into this company, That's which correct. is commendable. Yeah. It's a great thing. Right. Uh, in the course of doing so, you also have this other hat that you wear right. that is senior official. That's correct. And this is where you, you take all those relationships off the table, and now it becomes about what happens between those ropes. That's correct. Yes. Now, when you get in that ring, all those relationships, those working relationships go out the door. It is your job to ensure that the fans are getting a competition that is up to snuff, so to speak. That's the goal, yes. And recently, uh, we've had some, some instances where uh, you've become not only uh, personally involved, but physically involved. And we want to take a look now, before we get into our discussion about this, yeah. at some footage 
focusing on uh, an athlete by the name of Brent McKenzie. And let's start out with a match in Canton, Texas at one of our very first tapings for SWE Fury where Brent McKenzie had a very decisive win. Let's take a look at that. As Brent McKenzie is just taking it to Danny Saint. Yeah, it's been a one-sided match from, from this point on. We'll see what Danny Saint can do, right? And you know, you, I look at guys as they come into the ring, you get the close-ups of them, and, you know, you get to see their massive torsos or their foreheads and 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 this guy I mean just coming at you 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 would want to clear the way you see his face and you just want to move aside and say he can have the side you're exactly right I'm telling you he's the type of guy who has no fear at all you can tell when you meet him and uh, he's definitely cut out to be in a squared circle okay because he's gonna find matches along the way this kid might not be but you never know don't count him out yet okay he didn't get in wrestling just because it was an accident, okay, so he's got something in him. I mean, there's a reason he's at this event. There's a reason he's at go for the gold. I just hope that it isn't to have his career ended by Brent McKenzie. I've had this happen to me before. Right at the start of a match, I take some kind of injury or I get hurt, and uh, I took a whooping from then on out the rest of the match. What is it that pulls you through, though? What is it that takes you from at this this stage where where it seems like all hope is lost? Where do you get the energy when you know when you come back he's still going to be there? You know where it's at, buddy. You got to you got to deep get deep down inside, deep down inside, and uh, do everything you can. If, it's, if you're made to be in this business, you are. If you're not, you're not. Well, let's uh, let's do hope for the sake of Danny Saint that he was made to be in this business because right now he's being made. I'm telling you. Yeah, it's looking like uh, Big Boy might just put him out of his misery here. I don't know. <laughs> uh oh, we have a little knee action there. Uh See, he didn't even have the whole kick there. He, no. This, kid, this kid's been hurting through this match all the way. Yeah. He's, and now it's a reversal from Brent McKenzie into the corner post. McKenzie. Oh, he got on in there. He got left up. He needs to take advantage right now. Got a few good forearms as he backs him into the ropes. And a reversal. Danny Saint off the ropes. Ducks the clothesline. Brent McKenzie. Oh, they, they crash in midair. And, and when you have two guys... <laughs> Coming at each other with a flying crossbody, and one of them outweighs the other one by nearly double. That is exactly the outcome. I'm telling you, I would have hate to be on the other end of that. That looked like that really hurt. I mean, that's like flying through the air and colliding with a 747. <laughs> you got that right. No kidding. Oh, and that massive forehead. <laughs> and he just adds to the damage, right? Hey, look. See how he's doing it across the face? <laughs> Arm bar across the face. Yep. Now really trying to humiliate him and take advantage here. He's trying to rub it in is what he's doing. Yes, sir. And now just playing with Danny Saint. And I've been in these type of matches myself, and I was on the end at Danny Saints, and these are ones that you never forget. No, look at that. <laughs> Just, these are the ones you never forget. These are the ones that make you wake up sore in the morning years later, right? I'm telling you. You wonder, why, I, why do I even own wrestling gear? <laughs> what? Now, I don't understand what he's doing. He's just oh, trying to make a many runs. There was a punch I'm talking about right there. That's it. That's that punch you mentioned. He, he got up. He, he caught him angry. right, tag you right on the. Yeah. Right Danny Saint button. just, he, he let his. Done. He let his anger get the best of him. Yes, he he could have done something with that, but instead he turned around. I don't know what this is about, but the Super Test. All right, James, definitely a force to be reckoned with, but it definitely. was uh, it was from that point where uh, things began to go downhill as far as the relationship between the office <laughs> and Brent McKenzie, and we want to get into that in just a little bit. But first, I want to take a moment to talk to you about rules in professional wrestling. Okay, sure. As with any athletic competition, there has to be a set of rules. There have to be consequences when those rules aren't followed. There have to be ways to admonish the athletes when the rules aren't being followed. So let's talk, before we get into the specifics with Brent McKenzie, okay. let's spend a moment talking about the rules in professional wrestling. When, when two competitors step in that ring, 
uh, there are a few things that everyone knows. Right. For example, you pin somebody, you get a one, that's, two, three. That's a goal. Uh, when, you know, it used to be back in the old days, someone gets thrown off the top, over the top rope, that's a disqualification. Well, and, and is that even still a rule? It is in SWE now. Okay. Yes. Uh, you, you have a variety of rules, just like you do with any sport, and for us to sit here and go through them individually would be uh, a waste of your time and hours. Right. So let's focus on the rules that, that SWE is embracing that in many years we haven't seen anywhere at least not enforced the way they should be in my okay. opinion yes uh, we're gonna get around to closed fists in just a moment but let's <laughs> yeah. talk a little bit about some of the rules that SWA does enforce that you may not see enforced elsewhere right well uh, th that's gonna be the the big one that you're gonna notice more than anything else uh, uh, we we're basically adapting the the original NWA rules with some modifications um, the counts outside the ring and the old NWA rules were 20 20 count and, and in SWE it's, it's 10 I'm trying to get guys back in the ring where they're supposed right. to be okay. um, uh, and that's that's another thing that that uh, that you have to keep in mind that, that a lot of these rules in some cases like that are, are um, uh, sort of left up to the referee as far as how he handles them. Uh, a lot of times if guys are outside the ring and you know I, I don't want to count two guys out and just have a, have a, a match in that It's not way. what the fans want. Really. No it's not. And, they want to see a, a win or a loss. For exactly yeah and, and so, so do I as, a, as an official. So there's times when I may actually go out of the ring myself if they're both out there mm -hmm. and try to get them to get back in the ring so we can go ahead and have the match. Uh, okay. So instead of counting now there, there's a point in time when, when they do things to the point to where you know I just had enough and right. and, and I may go ahead and, and start counting and, and if that's that's the case that's the case but but hopefully we try to get the guys in the ring have the match in the ring and have a a, a decisive win one way or the other inside the ring so fans can see what's going on now when it comes down to moves and holds mm -hmm. there's one in particular that has recently been banned by SWE and this all goes back and there is a backstory to it and we'll get into that when we come back here our special sit down interview with senior official James Beard continues right after this on SWE Fury We're back on SWE Fury, a very special episode, sitting down with Director of Talent Relations, James Beard. He's also senior official. Now, uh, James, we have a guy who, of course, uh, has, has been a big draw for SWE, right. and his name is Brent McKenzie. <laughs> he has been great for the fans to watch, not so great to deal with. And I want to take you back to an event where we were setting up for our very first live SWE TV taping. Hey. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> What are you doing here? Uh, you don't say a word. It's my job to say words, man. Just saying, just do my job. There's the camera. I know that you're the matchmaker here at SWE, and you've got me in a preliminary match, August 24th in Canton, Texas. You're in a match? James, I'm not even on the card. Huh? They don't have my name anywhere. You know I don't this crap that. right here, worthless, because I'm not on it. Rodney Mack, Tim Storm, they're in the main event title match, right? Yes. Why am I not in the main event title match? A committee chose those guys. I mean, you were definitely on the on the list. I can promise you that. But they chose those guys. A as committee. A, yes. A committee chose those guys. Well, you better introduce that committee to me right away. Because if you don't, I'm going to show you exactly what happens when I don't get my way, James. Do you understand me? I understand you. And here's your microphone, word boy. Oh, word boy? And James, that wasn't the last time we heard from Brent. Later on that night, you yeah. and I talked backstage and, and met him again. Yeah, he, he, he evidently was in a bad mood that day. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. All right. They took him off in an ambulance on a stretcher. You know, I'd have to find out what. Yeah, find another team, right, James? You seem to have lost control on the very first night. What's going on, James? You wanna know why that happened out there? It's because you showed APOC, Adam Asher, the same disrespect that this company has shown me. Oh, come on. You know exactly what I'm talking about, James. You Come know August 24th, 
I'm going to show everybody what I'm talking about. James, what do you think it is that motivates someone like that? We saw earlier a little bit of his performance in Canton. His, mm -hmm. his, uh, you know, obviously Smash Mouth style of wrestling. He uh, well, takes no prisoners and goes in there and, and goes after the win every single time. But um, what, what do you think was the chip on Brett McKenzie's shoulder at that point? Well, one of the reasons I, I hired Brett or, or booked Brett to, to wrestle for us is, is that intensity. I like that. I want that kind of thing. Absolutely. Uh, I, I want guys to compete. I want it to be hard-nosed. Um, and, and we're going to feature that kind of wrestling uh, overall. Um, but uh, evidently Brent was not happy because we had a committee that, that decided who the top two performers at wrestlers were for, for the title, the major heavyweight title for SWE, and he wasn't one of those two. I mean, he was one of the guys considered, but he wasn't one of those two. And uh, evidently that stuck in his craw a little bit. So uh, he he's kind of decided that I'm the cause of that, I think. He made it, made it more of a personal thing, which it really was not just myself, but that's okay. You know, there's nothing new. Actually, Brent and I have always had a good relationship. I mean, I, I've known him a long time. Uh, we've, we've gotten along well uh, until this, for whatever reason. Yeah. <laughs> Things seem to have gone south. Yes, quickly. it has. Yes. So let's take a little break and come back with more with James Beard. But before we do that, we'll have another exciting match from our Go for the Gold event in Canton, Texas, right here on SWE Fury. Welcome back to SWE Go for the Gold. Up next, Magnificent Malico takes on a legit MMA fighter in Jerome Daniels. But as Malico told me earlier, this isn't the first time. The third time will be the charm. Absolutely, you're a smart guy, huh? <laughs> good to know, good to know. Because when I'm in the ring with Jerome Daniels tonight, it may be the third time we've encountered each other, but it will be the very last time he ever stares across from my beautiful face in that ring again. Do you know why? Why? Do you know why? No, I don't. Because I'm going to break his feeble little skull. With my hands. With your hands. With my hands. Yes, with sir. my feet. With my arms. I, I and believe I'll you. I use my head if I have to. Okay, I believe you, Magnificent Malico. <laughs> he is malevolent. He is malicious. He is the Magnificent Malico. What did I tell you, Linda? Look at this guy. Well, it's a little different. I, I don't think a I've little. ever... A little? A <laughs> little? Yeah, okay, a whole lot different. I don't know. I mean, yeah, look at the fella. You wouldn't think he knows a wrestling hood, would you? No, the man is like something out of a something. horror movie. I spoke to him earlier. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, either the circus or a horror movie. Something like that. I don't know. I'm going to have nightmares. I am going to have nightmares and... <laughs> But let's see what he can do in the ring against Jerome Daniels. Magnificent Malico. All I've heard about the guy, is he's a fantastic guy in the ring in the square circle. He knows what he's doing. We're about to find out here. Southwest Wrestling Entertainment, go for the gold. Look at Jerome Daniels who's insured. That's what I wanted to do when he came out for that interview earlier. I just didn't, <laughs> didn't want to be here. I hear you. Match. Paul not officiating this match between Magnificent Malico and Jerome Daniels, who is uh, taking his time outside the ring to get ready to go in and face the stuff of nightmares. You know, Jerome, I hear he was trained by uh, Killer Brooks, Killer Tim Brooks. Really? And also uh, Skander Akbar was involved in his training. But I'll tell you something, I know those guys very well. Me and Killer Brooks were tag team partners many times, and he is double tough. Agbar was double tough. If he got through the training with those guys, watch this guy closer, he'll probably hurt him. Okay, that is something to be on the lookout for. I know very well the, the training that the, the Killer Tim Brooks, just a tough, tough guy. You said you were able to tag with him. I guess that means uh, never really had to square up against him. What? What? What is he 
doing? Was he biting him? Tastes like chicken. Great. <laughs> Great. Yeah, he's really a little different type cat, isn't he? Just his approach. Unprecedented and just a definitely hard hitting in the ring. I, I'm liking what I see so far. Ow. Oh, that's dumb. Ah, that's I mean, look at the guy's face. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Sadistic. <laughs> Sadistic. That's all, that's all it is. And the way he talks and the... And, oh, I... Oh. They heard that in Tyler, Texas. Yeah, that hurt me. <laughs> How did, how did, Bob, how do you say this fellow's name? Magnificent Malico. Malico, okay. Yes. Malico. Malico, Malico, you gotta be careful. You don't want anybody thinking he's related like, like, a, yeah. like Dean Malico. Oh, oh, look at there. Move. That was a good fake. He fooled Jerome Daniels into thinking he wasn't paying attention. He was ready for him. Two, a not quiet three as Jerome Daniels kicks out. Now see, there goes all those moves people were telling me about. They said this guy is something out here. Yeah, and uh, I guess he's getting geared up by spinning around the ring, trying to decide which corner to go to. Just backs Jerome Daniels up into that corner. Daniels out of the way. Maliko hitting the, the turnbuckle. Turned around now by Jerome Daniels and a big knee to the back. And brings him down right on his own arm. I thought he was going for a hammer lock, but he uh, he brought him down on his own arm, straight to the ring, in the corner. There's no give over there. That was a different way of doing it. I've seen it done before. That's a different way of hurting the shoulder. But I guarantee you that hurt. Malico in a little bit of pain right now, but drops down and says, here. You go outside the ring while I get better. Well, there's another one of those things I tell you. If you telegraph on what you're doing, you'll learn over time it always backfires. That's right, and uh, that's exactly what Jerome Daniels did. He he backed up. He made it very obvious that's what he was headed to do. What is Malico doing here? <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's now fashioned a sling for his arm. How resourceful. He now has his arm in his sling, and he's he's got his face right in the fist of Jerome Daniels. He walked right into that one. Literally. And now being choked over the rope, that can't be legal. And what is he doing? He's... Well, I think Daniels went, hey, listen, wrestling's out of the book now. I got to do something. This guy is so uh, he's so awkward to wrestle. He's so different in styles. You're unsure how to handle him, you know? All right. Those forearm shots, knocking the paint right off the face of Magnificent Malico. And, and I have to wonder, you know, he, he his arm is hurt, but but is putting it in that little makeshift sling on the front of his, <laughs> is that a good idea? I mean, you, you basically, like, even if the arm starts to feel better, he can't use it. Oh, oh that, that had to hurt. I don't know, I don't, that's something I don't understand. I've never seen that done all the many years I've been in professional wrestling to sling your own arm during the match. I know, that's uh, that's the first for me. He's pounding his own head now. Oh yeah, those headbutts. Magnificent Malico, apparently the head, a strong part. It, is that him? I don't know what that is. I thought someone let a hyena into the building. That's oh, him doing <laughs> Apparently has his arm out of the sling now. Try to clothesline with that miss. Probably a good thing. Well, this is <laughs> this is definitely a different style match. A lot of stuff you never seen before. And man, just think about it. We got two more title matches coming up too, Bob. So excited about that. We have the, of course, our main event tonight is the TV title match, the first ever SWE television five title. Five minutes Five minutes the first ever SWE television title on the line tonight. And also we got the ladies making the uh, championship match happen, right? That's right. That's coming up a little bit later on. So excited to see Jazz in action out here tonight. Going after that ladies title. 
The folks at SWE searched all over the Southwest to find the talent to bring in here to Canton, Texas for this big event. And the level of talent they've been able to bring in is just astonishing. That main Good grief, look oh at that. Oh, my goodness. Magnificent Maliko goes over, and nobody home. <laughs> Jerome Daniels moves out of the way. And this is where Jerome needs to take advantage of it, you know. Those high-flying moves they look good, but when you miss, it hurts. That's right. It looked great. Uh, speaking of, though, the talent. Oh. Good Lord, I don't, I don't think that's that shoulder is in the socket anymore. Yeah, that arm's hurting bad, real bad. He's going to need more than a swing if he stays in there. Malico is in pain, working his way back to his feet. I do want to make mention, though, of the competitors for our TV title match tonight. You will not want to miss that match. Please stay tuned for it. And we look, we, we have Malico making what looks like a little bit of a comeback there with a back elbow and a big boot to the face. You have to say one thing about the guy. Maybe he's different, but he's tough. That's right. I don't know many who could keep going after the pain that has been inflicted on that shoulder and now between the bottom and middle rope again he goes and, hey oh, that's an awesome move there manages to get him up two and and not quite oh, enough almost two and three quarters andy dalton who is the son of a frank dalton will be here tonight uh, and also Barrett Brown. These two guys have been battling all across Texas, and tonight they have a chance at gold, that TV title, as we see more damage on Magnificent Malico's shoulder. Well, you're right about the TV title. I've heard both those boys, both those fellows, those men, I might say, or, uh, are very, very good wrestlers, and they've earned a right to be in this match, and it'll be really awesome to watch. Did you ever have a chance to work around uh, Andy Dalton's father? Oh, yeah, Frank Dalton. Yeah, I was around him a lot. Um, but when I started with Frank Dalton, I was a 17-year-old kid, and he was already a veteran. So, wow. boy, they used to put me through the mill. But you know <laughs> something? I learned how to be a pro. And his daddy was a pro, and uh, he is as well. Well, you know, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There, the bell has it's been rung. now. The, the referee calls it. And the winner is about to be of this qualification. The Magnificent Malico! Well, there you go. <laughs> you know what I like to see? I like to see the rules being followed. He was counted out. That was a disqualification. Malico was in the ropes. Well, unlike you, Bob, I hate it when they go by the rules because I was a that tight wrestler, but nowadays that I'm just a fan, you know, I have to watch, you're correct. I hate to see that because guys get away with all kinds of things that they shouldn't, and they need to have rules in our profession. One of the things that you will see here with SWE is the rules being followed, the referees enforcing the rules, and if you break the rules, you lose the match. We're back, SWE Fury. I'm Bob Malden, joined by Senior Official and Director of Talent Relations, James Beard. Now, James, we've talked a little bit about the rules of professional wrestling overall. Right. Uh, and it varies from league to league and promotion to promotion, it whatever does. you prefer to call them, as to what rules are adhered to and, and what, what uh, specific measures are taken when those rules are broken. But because of the situation we've been discussing for the better part of half an hour now, there have been some measures that have been put back in place with SWE that were, for a long time, uh, offenses that could have had someone immediately disqualified. Talk to me about well, what is now happening with SWE. Yeah, well, well let, me, let me say this before, before we get too far into that. Uh, these rules were rules that I intended to impl in, implement anyway. Okay. Regardless, even even though this happened with Brent, uh, these rules were going to come no matter what. So okay. it's not a, necessarily a direct 
uh, uh, result of what happened. Okay. Uh, Brent probably thinks so. Well, this uh, may be the journalist in me coming out here. Yeah. A bit, okay. James, okay. Let me let me press you just a little sure. bit. Sure. For a long time, anyone casually watching wrestling could right. see a fist being used and see that that person didn't get disqualified. Right. Right. What makes SWE different, and does Brent McKenzie play a part in it? Well, let, let me ask you this from a, the, the kind of a, a, my perspective. Okay. Uh, what has a fist got to do with wrestling? It never has. It's not wrestling. And, and you know, I watch, I watch wrestling, too, like everybody else does. And, and, and one of my pet peeves in the last few years is that a lot of wrestling promotions, and I, I'm talking about from the very smallest to the largest Mm -hmm. on TV that you see, uh, you can't tell what the rules are from one match to the next. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, they may mean something in this match, and then the next match, the same thing happens, and it doesn't mean anything. Right. And it just frustrates me. And I know it has to frustrate fans, because fans used to understand what the rules are. Right. And that, that helps them follow what's right and what's wrong, and what they should be happy about and not happy about, and that kind of thing. You're just like any sport. Mm -hmm. um, a close fist to the face, uh, uh, up above the neck, is basically what our rule is. You can't do that. If you do that, you're disqualified. And, and to me, that takes away everything that has to do with professional wrestling because it's not a wrestling move. It's an MMA move, but we're not MMA. We're not no. trying to be MMA. Uh, there, there's other, other rules that are similar to that. You can't kick with the toe. You, the flat of the foot, flat of the foot is okay. But okay. with the toe, isn't, it's, it's an illegal kick. Right. It's always been that way, but it's not always, uh, it's not always adhered to, and it's not always uh, admonished and, and, and even made uh, an illegal move by other promotions, it, where it really should be, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. In SWE, it's going to be. When, in my conversations with Lynn Denton, as he calls <laughs> these matches with me, uh, you know, Lynn Denton wasn't always on the rules oh, following no, side. No, listen, I, I uh, worked with the grappler many, many times, and, and uh, uh, I've been in his face or his mask <laughs> right, <laughs> a right. few times. And, and he, but he, the, the thing is, is he knows the difference. Yeah. So, at what point do you go from something that gets you counted to something that is an immediate disqualification? What offenses? in SWE will now lead someone to an immediate disqualification. Well, there's two things that you don't see a lot in more. One is that, that blow to the closed fist blow to the head. An immediate of the disqualification. Uh, that's an immediate disqualification okay. if the referee sees it. Okay. Uh, going, throwing your opponent over the top rope on purpose, purposely throwing them over the top rope. That's okay. a do immediate disqualification. Okay, immediate. Uh, and those are those are old rules that used to be in place. Yeah, absolutely. I remember those rules. Not always well. enforced, but mm -hmm. always in place. Uh, and and the reason for that is both of those things are dangerous moves. Outside interference. Outside interference is is a, is a disqualification. Okay, absolutely. Uh, again, it. it, it Predicates upon the referee absolutely seeing it. Yes, yeah, and, and that's one thing I want to. Uh, that's one thing that's kind of unique about professional. Well, it's not really unique. It's kind of the same as any other profession. Uh, if the referee sees it, he's got the final results. We don't have instant replay. We don't right. get to call New York. Right. You know. So whatever the whatever the referee sees, whatever he calls, whatever he his final decision is, that's it. That's the well, way. Even it is. in the NFL, a face mask that isn't witnessed by a referee, yeah. never happens. Yeah, you can't call New York on that. Right. Now, they do have things in in, in football yeah. and basketball now that, that that they can call about if they don't see right. it. Yeah. If somebody protests, but we don't have that. We don't have coaches, and we no. don't have guys throwing a flag. So if the referee sees it, those things. It's an immediate disqualification. If he doesn't see it, well, I guess the guy got away with it. That's all I can say. Okay. It happens in every sport. Right. When we come back, we'll talk to James Beard about what we're going to do moving forward in SWE about this Brent McKenzie problem. We'll talk about that with James Beard right after this. Back 
back on SWE Fury. I'm Bob Mulder, joined by Director of Talent Relations and Senior Official James Beard. Now, we've talked about the the no closed fist and how right. that's an immediate dis disqualification. Right. But another sanction uh, by you, imposed by you, uh, that has directly affected Brent McKenzie is he now doesn't have the opportunity to compete for the SWE title for six months well that's that yeah I I, I did have some direct effect on that that okay. ruling although uh, the the initial meeting with the with the board of directors was that they they were wanted to just suspend him period and so they could so wrestle. really his fate is a little bit uh, uh, better my, because of you my argument was that that uh, and the part of this is personal because I do know Brent I've known him a long time he's, a, he's an excellent competitor uh, Part of my part of my reasoning was is I want him I want him there I want him I want him to compete right but he has to be punished for what he did he can't he can't attack an official he can't and I'm not talking about me as a that wasn't really as a referee that was as an official for the the company okay. uh, but either way he's got to be punished for that so his punishment is and he and, and he's still signed to compete with us he's got to do that got to, to uh, maintain his his uh, obligations yeah, with us agreement, right? yeah so he's got to compete but he cannot compete for a title for a minimum of six months wow and, and there's things he could do that would actually make that longer possible. absolutely yes okay absolutely well uh we are going to be watching very closely to see how things play out with Super Tech's Brent McKenzie going forward into the future. And as we get ready to wrap this episode up, it's been sort of a recap. Yeah. Uh, and we've, we've had to go back through and sort of parse through some things here. Any final words for the fans of SWE, James? Yeah, I, I think, uh, and this, this ties into what we've been talking about. I, the, the, the goal, at least the goal I have for SWE, is to have competitors who get in there and, and fight hard and, and hopefully follow the rules. I mean, I know it's that's the wrestling's wrestling. You're gonna, you're gonna have times when and certain guys with different personalities and different styles, and, and some of them are a little bit rougher than the others. Some some have a tendency to want to try to 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 be more technical. Some are more brawlers. That's okay. I get it. I don't have a problem with that. I want guys to be that way. We want to have that old Texas style of wrestling. Sure. And some of these guys are going to probably have to be educated as to what that is and, 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 and maybe educated in the hard way. Yeah, right. But, but, but that's where we're headed. And, and that's what we're. What my goal is, is to provide fans because I think they've seen enough. If they want to see something else, they can always go look at another product. Right. And and our product is going to be hard hitting. It's going to be tough. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be old school type wrestling and and brawling if it has to be or fighting. I hope these guys wrestle more. I really do. Yeah. But you know, if if they want to get after it, let them get after it. You know, as yeah. long as they, as long as they don't do some of the things that we're talking about that that right. goes over the line. And 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 so I'm 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 really excited about this, and I'm I'm excited about bringing in the kind of talent that that can can compete under those circumstances. And and and, and it's going to be fun seeing some of the younger guys learn how to do that. So uh, it's going to be fun. I I, th I think the fans are going to enjoy this style of wrestling. Well, I'll step out of my broadcaster role for just a second and sure. put my fan shoes back on good, and tell good, you yeah. that I personally am very excited about the style of wrestling that SWE brings Thank you. Uh, to fans all over the nation with uh, all of our television productions that are upcoming and have already happened. And uh, thank you, James, for being here with us and sort of explaining things. Yeah, well, I hope, I hope the fans enjoy what we're doing. And, and, and uh, I'm, I'm going to do my best to bring some of the best talent that, that, that's available out there for them. We're excited about that. More wrestling action coming up next week right here at SWE Fury. We'll be back and we'll see you then. For James Beard, I'm Bob Malden. Have a great week.